pleased to appear to discuss research supported by the National Institutes of Health, National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, and the National Toxicology Program on exposure to radiofrequency radiation from the use of cellular telephones. I'm John Booker, Associate Director of the National Toxicology Program. Cellular telephones use radiofrequency energy or radiation for mobile communication. Wireless communication devices are used by more than 270 million Americans. With so many users, this could translate into a significant health, public health problem should their use even slightly increase the risk of adverse health effects. While the weight of current scientific evidence has not conclusively linked cell phone use with any health problems, we and other scientific organizations believe better data are needed to establish any potential risks to humans from the low-level radiofrequency radiation exposures associated with their use. The Food and Drug Administration nominated cell phone radiofrequency radiation emissions to the NTP for toxicology and carcinogenicity testing. The nomination was based on the following concerns. There's widespread human exposure. Current exposure guidelines are based on protection from acute injury from thermal effects. Little is known about potential health effects of long-term exposure. Little is known about potential health effects of long-term exposure, and sufficient data from human studies to clearly answer these questions may not be available for many years. The NTP is working to provide information that will help clarify any potential health hazards from exposure to cell phone radiation. We're in the initial stages of conducting toxicology and carcinogenicity studies in laboratory animals using specially designed chambers to provide exposures that simulate those of cell phone users in the United States. The rats and mice will be exposed to radiofrequency energy from the two technologies, CDMA and GSM, currently used at two frequencies, 900 and 1900 megahertz. Because of the complexity of these studies, we're working with experts from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. NIST scientists have developed a system that provides uniform exposures to radiofrequency radiation to unrestrained rodents in the frequency bands used in mobile communications. This design allows for exposures for up to 20 hours per day, in contrast to the most comprehensive rodent cancer studies carried out to date in Europe using restrained animals where exposures were only to two hours per day. The system consists of 21 chambers assembled in Switzerland and installed in IIT Research Institute laboratories in Chicago. The chambers are essentially shielded rooms with a transmitting antenna radiating radio frequency fields and rotating stirrers to generate statistically uniform fields. The NTP is conducting studies in three phases pilot studies to establish field strengths that do not excessively raise body temperature, subchronic toxicology studies where animals are exposed to various subthermal field strengths for one month, and chronic toxicology and carcinogenicity studies exposing animals for 24 months. The studies include both sexes of rats and mice and pregnant female rats, allowing us to examine potential health effects from exposures starting in gestation and continuing through old age. The pilot studies are nearly complete, subchronic studies will begin early next year, and the chronic toxicology and carcinogenicity studies will start in late 2010, finish in 2012, with peer review and reporting in the 2013-2014 time frame. I'm going to show some pictures of the, uh, to give you some sense of the magnitude of this operation. These are the, uh, the chambers that were designed and built in Switzerland and, and shipped to IIT Research Institute in Chicago. Um, you can see they were had to be they're large enough to be uh, placed on a crane and dropped through into a an underground laboratory facility where they're uh, obviously being uh, <laughs> received and uh, moved into place. Go ahead, Michael. And then here's a picture of the final uh, series of 21 21 chambers. Um, I, I don't understand what the chambers are for. These chambers are, are where the uh, rat rodent studies are going to be carried out. These are the uh, exposure chambers where the radio frequency radiation will be uh, exposed to the animals. And you can vary the levels and all that. Varying levels, yes. Doctor, you may have covered this in your opening statement. I missed it. But how long will it take you to do your analysis? For the particular studies that I was just describing, the uh, analysis will be taking place in uh, 2013 and we'll be reporting in 2014. 
And why does it take so long, just because it takes that long in the lab to well, there is, get data uh, together? There is about a three-year time in which the animals will be exposed. And it takes about a year to analyze a study after that. Will there be any preliminary numbers, or will we have to wait till the end to know where there, this is going? It's a three-phase study, and there will be information available from the first two stages earlier than that. But they won't be as definitive with respect to outcomes such as cancer. Do you know if uh, wireless phones were tested by anyone before they came on the market? Do you know the history of that? and? you know, how much testing was done or not done? With respect to health-related mm -hmm. testing, I do not know the answer to that. I can find yeah, I an idea of that. I, I think uh, there would be a lot of people that would be curious about that to know if any, uh, anything was done. And Do you know if uh, wireless phones were tested by anyone before they came on the market? Do you know the history of that and you know how much testing was done or not done? With respect to health related mm -hmm. testing, I do not know the answer to that. Little is known about potential health effects of long term exposure. Little is known about potential health effects of long-term exposure. Little is known about potential health effects of long-term exposure.